After almost a year since the last legendary Pokemon appeared in a terror raid, Shiny Rayquaza is here to breathe some fresh air into Scarlet and Violet. That is right, it is time to dust off your copies of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. I know you lost it last year, you haven't played it in two years, or you're like me and you never stop playing it. Either way, we finally have an event that it's worth loading up the game for. Let me not get ahead of myself and pause for some housekeeping. Shiny Rayquaza is coming to Terror Raids in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet starting on December 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time until January 5th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Rayquaza is going to have a Dragon Terror type and be a 5-star Terror Raid. You only have to beat it once to catch yours. If you're like me and need to stack up on the resources leading up to the Rayquaza Raids, there's going to be 6 Pokemon featured in Event Terror Raids to help us get ready. I'm gonna be pumping out the previews beforehand. I'm gonna be live as soon as the event starts and pumping out the guides to help make sure as many people as possible get their Shiny Rayquaza. Because as someone that has a Shiny Rayquaza, I gotta say, they're pretty dang cool. But before we talk about how we're gonna beat Rayquaza or even Rayquaza itself, we're gonna take a look back at the legendary Pokemon we've already faced in Terror Raids so we can get some clues on what we can expect when Shiny Rayquaza drops this December. I think the difficulty of Shiny Rayquaza is going to be somewhere in between the 5-star Dialga and Palkia raids we saw on December 23 and the 7-star Mewtwo Terror raid we saw in August of 2023. But let's start by looking at Dialga. So Dialga and Palkia both had 4 moves to choose from and they had 0 status moves. So they both had all 4 attacking moves. And they had some scripted additional moves of status moves. Palkia had scripted Rain Dance and Gravity, while Dialga had scripted Iron Defense, Stealth, Rock, and Trick Room. Looking closer at their scripted events, we can see that Dialga cleared its own stats twice. Same with Palkia, so they cleared their own stats twice and cleared the player's stats once. Dialga and Palkia got a health multiplier of times 35, and if we look at Mewtwo, we can see it got a health multiplier of times 50, being a 7-star Terror Raid. We can also see that Mewtwo reset the player stats twice and its own stats twice. So every time it resets either our stats or its own stats, that is going to add a greater amount of difficulty. Another key difference between Dialga and Palkia and Mewtwo is Mewtwo had three attacking moves to choose from, Psy Shrike, or a Spear, an Ice Beam, and also a status move, Calm Mind. So the, the Pokemon that we face in 7-star Terror Raids that have a status move that they can use in their normal moveset have been a great deal more difficult. Think about things like 7-star Meganium spamming the move Curse. I think Rayquaza will have a status move, maybe Dragon Dance or Swords Dance. I think it's going to be more like Mewtwo in that sense, and I could very easily see it have two stat resets each. That would make it a great deal harder compared to Dialga and Palkia. Another thing we see with Mewtwo is that it had a held item, Chesto Berry, which it was able to utilize. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Rayquaza had the held item. We see Dialga and Palkia do not. Something that I think could be interesting would maybe be a weakness policy. It depends how tricky they want to get. It is a bit disappointing though that we're not going to get a shiny Rayquaza with the mightiest mark. Because as you can see, Dialga and Palkia no Mightiest Mark because they're only 5-star Terror Raids, just like our Shiny Rayquaza Raid. There was another really fun wrinkle to the 7-star Mewtwo Raids, and that's that Mew got a special bonus in this raid. I don't think we're going to see any particular Pokemon get boosted here. If you have an idea on a Pokemon that would be good to be boosted in the Shiny Rayquaza Raid, maybe taking some inspiration from the anime, let me know in the comments. I think it would have made sense if maybe they gave like a Deoxys, like Deoxys vs Rayquaza, or even something like uh, encouraging Groudon and Kyogre to take on Rayquaza. Quick note from editing, Dan, I glossed over something very important. That is 7-star Mewtwo started with its shield up. That makes the world of difference. If that is the case, then all of our status moves are not going to work until we get that shield down. Another key difference between 7-star Mewtwo and Zyalga and Palkia is that Mewtwo was actually EV trained. It had defense and special defense EVs, making it even tankier. So if Game Freak wanted to buff up Rayquaza a little bit, they'd give it some EVs, but I don't think they will because after all, they made Roshani Rayquaza a five-star terror raid, which is a good thing for accessibility because we have to remember the main target audience is not adults like me. The main target audience of Pokemon is 10-year-olds and 
10-year-olds don't have fully developed brains to beat complex steroids. But with this context in mind, let's talk a little bit more about Rayquaza and what it can throw at us. Rayquaza is an absolute beast. It has incredible attack and special attack, and it's going to outspeed most of our Pokemon. Uh, defensively, it has no glaring weakness. The, the bulk is solid. It's not going to blow you away, but it's very solid bulk. Its hidden ability, Airlock, will eliminate any effects of weather in this terror raid. And yes, I tested it. It's not just when Rayquaza is released from the Pokeball. It is at all times while Rayquaza is on the field. This could matter because the snow weather condition would really help the Terra Ice Pokemon. There's a lot that have their abilities benefit from it. So maybe if you want a specific like Glaceon build or something, you're going to want to get rid of the ability, but it might not be worth its trouble. Attack wise, I'm pretty confident we're going to see a turn one scripted Dragon Ascent. That is Rayquaza's signature move. I don't think it'll be in the main move pool. It's not going to spam it because it lowers the uh, Rayquaza's defense and special defense by one stage. If it is just throwing them out there, then holy cow, we're going to steamroll Rayquaza. I think it's going to be one of the deals when, hey, it's going to pick one of the Pokemon. It's going to rip it and then just get rid of its negative effects. Maybe even mix in a turn zero Dragon Dance. Rayquaza is normally a Dragon and Flying type Pokemon, so we know it's going to have a Flying and Dragon move. I think Dragon Descent is going to be additional. So it's Dragon move. I think it's going to be Dragon Pulse, Dragon Claw. I think Dragon Pulse because it'll make Rayquaza a mixed attacker. Uh, we only have to worry about physical attacking moves. We're going to have a really good time with Rayquaza. But if it's Flying move, isn't Dragon Ascent? Maybe Air Slash? Maybe Aerial Ace? If it had Acrobatics, that would be perfect. I don't know. Another Dragon move, Breaking Swipe, will be solid to lower our attack every time. It's got a lot of really cool things it can do, and it has a ton of coverage. You scroll down the move list for Rayquaza, and there's a ton of sick moves. I wouldn't, I do think it will have extreme speed. Its PP is low though, so maybe they won't include it. If I was making this raid, I personally would have made Rayquaza uh, Terra normal and just have it have Terra boosted extreme speed. But I mean, you'd have to cheat and raise the PP. I do think one of Rayquaza's four move slots will be a status move. I think either Swords Dance, but I think more likely it will be Dragon Dance. It will raise the attack and speed by both one stage. And I think that's going to really be scary, especially later in the Terror Raid, if Rayquaza has any scripted attacks. Like we've seen with Turbo Turtle Time with Blastoise and Torterra. You know, with Torterra, you get to the end, about 30% HP. It hits its normal attack and then BAM, another Earthquake. And now, oh my god, it's cheating. I think we can see something very similar with Rayquaza. Now that we got a decent idea of what we're up against, here are six Pokemon you can use in group online raids to take down Rayquaza, hopefully, but I'm recording this about a month before the event starts, so make sure you check back for the channel once the event starts for some proven solo, duo, and group builds. Today's mostly about the Fairy Terra type with a little sprinkle of ice, because I think Fairy is going to be the best. We're going to get immunity from Dragon type attacks, and we are going to hit for super effective damage. I am sleeping on the Dragon Terra Pokemon because by default, we're going to be taking super effective damage from probably Dragon Pulse or Dragon Claw. I do like that Cloyster. That's going to be a lot of fun. And I think Ice Pokemon, they have a lot of progress that could be made, but that's enough yap. Let's get into each one of these builds. But before we do, just know all these builds are going to be in the description and they are subject to change. They can and will change once the event starts. Let's kick things off with one of the Pokemon getting featured in the raids leading up to the Shiny Rayquaza raids is Doomerol. It's been a Terra Raid staple since the beginning here, mainly because of its ability to do massive damage with a combination of huge power and the move Belly Drum. Belly Drum, of course, halves your HP, but maximizes your attack up to plus six. It is usually a lot riskier to use in raids like this, in which we're going against a really powerful Pokemon. So hopefully that we will be able to get it off and survive and for a turn before we can use play rough with our shell bell to get all that hp back azumarill uses mud slap to charge its terror orb increases survivability of itself and its allies because if rayquaza can't hit us it can't knock us out as its fourth move slot right now i have charm you could go with misty terrain but i actually am not a big fan of misty terrain against rayquaza misty terrain halves dragon type damage but a lot of our counters are going to be fairy type so unless we're raiding with Ice Terra Pokemon or some support Pokemon, we're not going to get that benefit. 
Where we could see the benefit is where we saw it with the uh, Mewtwo Terror Raid, and that's preventing any status conditions. So if Rayquaza wants to do some rest shenanigans like Mewtwo, then maybe Misty Terrain will be useful. But for now, I'm putting Misty Terrain on the bench. Azumarill also has excellent typing for the Rayquaza raid. It has that fairy typing, which is amazing. We get immunity to the dragon type attacks. We hit it for super effective damage. And that water typing, it makes it so we're not taking super effective damage from steel. So because of this, Azumarill's not gonna be taking super effective damage until after we Terrastalize. By that point, we should be set up with Belly Drum and Rayquaza should have its accuracy lowered. A quick disclaimer, the stats in the Pokemon I'm showing in this video are not going to be the exact same as the stats I list in the description. Defer to the stats in the description uh, until the raid starts on December 19th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Come to the stream. We're not going to know exactly what Rayquaza has in its bag. Maybe it's only a physical attacker and we only go to Fence EVs. Maybe it's mix and we have to account for both and we have to account for HP. So I'd say don't invest fully in the EVs of your Pokemon until it starts, until we find out more information. This is more so loosely, all right, what kind of things, what, how do we want to approach this? What are some potential strategies? We want to be ready for whatever Rayquaza throws at us. Next up is another build that I think is going to shine in group raids, and that is Zacian the Sword Dog. You could go Rusted Sword in group raids if you don't have to worry about that healing. I'm thinking maybe a pack of three Zacian with something with life due to heal it would be great. Because you could go Swords Dance if you wanted to, but you could also have three Sword Dogs just rip a couple Howls, increase the attack of everybody. You could keep it going, you could Roar when you're not Howling, if you want to lower <laughs> Rayquaza's stats. It would be nice, especially if it's a mixed attacker, because it lowers both attack and special attack. Play Rough is how this build deals damage. Of course, it has the chance to miss, the chance to lower the attack is nice. For the fourth move for charging our orb right now, I have this crunch for the 30% chance to lower the target's defense. Why Zacian? Because it has excellent typing. It's going to be fairy and steel when it holds that sword. So we're not going to be taking any super effective damage from Rayquaza unless maybe it has Earthquake. The sword dog is going to do a million damage, but you for sure need a healer because we have no shell bell. We cannot heal ourselves. If Rayquaza ends up being mostly a special attacker, we can use Snarl instead of Crunch. But I think Sword Dog is going to be a great pick for group raids. Boyster is a Pokemon I have never used in a Terra raid, but I think it might just shine here. It's going to be Terra Ice, and it could sneakily be a solid solo if and only if Rayquaza is only a physical attacker. If Rayquaza has special attacking moves, woof, our Cloyster is cooked, but look at that defense. Why Cloyster? It has the typing of water and ice, so that you can see the trend. I'm really afraid of the steel type uh, coverage, so this makes steel type not super effective. What we can do, we have the skill link ability. We can maximize the number of times our multi-strike moves hit, which makes Icicle Spear always hit five times, giving it a whopping base power of 125. The downside is it's going to be kind of slow. The animation is going to take up a lot of time. And so if you're not a Terra Raid expert like me, you may not consider that the animation time of what you do is very, very important. This is why I advise against using the leftovers held item whenever possible in Terra Raids, because every single animation, it just tick, 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 tick on that time bar, because it's not the set amount of moves. It is time. So Icicle Spear, it's going to be powerful, but it's going to take time. We can charge our Terror Orb with Razor Shell, which has a 50% chance to lower the target's defense to power up Icicle Spear. And things can get nutty. We could Iron Defense three times, and if Rayquaza doesn't have a special attacking move, we just might not take damage. Then we can freely Shell Smash, lower our defense a little bit, and sneakily do a lot. This could be really fun. This, could, this might crash and burn, but I have my eye on this. This is the official... Uh, Dan pick for eye of my eye on you for a sneaky potential solo and if it was a seven star We wouldn't be saying it, but it's a five star raid. Maybe cloister. Why not? Let's get funky You had a funky pick. Let me know in the comments This is a far less funky pick. This is a terror raid staple supporter since the blueberry Academy or indigo disc came out It's Dan creamy. Why Al creamy? Because it has the uh, move decorates and a plethora of a, an abundance of other really good status moves, but decorate and lowers, it, it raises the target's attack and special attack by two stages. You can just supercharge any of your teammates. And if that's not enough, once your teammate is at plus six attack or special attack, you can help hand them. 
So recover, that's how we're gonna stay alive. Acid armor, we want to survive. We have a lot of other good options. You could go reflect, you could go light screen. Uh, for whatever reason, if it helps, we can keep our allies from falling asleep. I don't think that Rayquaza even can put us asleep, but it has, we have a lot of really good things going for us. Uh, Item-wise, I like the Covert Cloak right now, because as I just said, leftovers would be nice for some extra recovery, but it takes up animation time. Covert Cloak, just in case uh, Rayquaza has some moves with secondary effects. If it doesn't, we could go with maybe a Bright Powder to make Rayquaza miss us more. But this will be a really fun uh, support Pokemon. We're not going to be able to heal our allies, but we're going to make sure that they can do a million damage. Alcremi is an offensive support Pokemon. Tinkaton is more defensive minded, I would say. It's again, it's not going to heal like some of the other Pokemon we're going to talk about shortly, but it can do a lot of things. It has a really lot of a lot of useful <laughs> support moves as I have a Shroke live in the middle of the video. Don't worry about it. So we have the own tempo ability, but why Tinkinson? It's got uh, the fairy and steel typing. That's what we liked about Sword Dog, great typing. We're not gonna be taking super effective damage from that steel type move like Iron Head. I sound like a broken record, but I think it's just really important that we can survive the early game. Uh, for this, we have Skitter Smack to lower Rayquaza's special attack. Maybe Rayquaza just comes out swinging with like Dragon Pulse, Grass, uh, Energy Ball, and a whole mess of special attacking moves. In that case, Skitter Smack. Maybe Rayquaza has its shield up the whole time and we're going to have a really hard time uh, lowering its defense. We have Rock Smash for the 50% chance to drop the defense. We can go Reflect or Light Screen depending on what we want to do. And we can have Play Rough but we want to utilize that Shell Bell to get some healing once we lower the defense. We have a lot of other ways we could go here with Tinkatsun. You could go Light Screen. Uh, whatever we need to do. It could be a really good mixed attacker. Uh, you could end up doing some solid damage. You could throw on the Swords Dance instead of Reflect and make it an offensive Pokemon. There's a lot you can do. I have my Iron Tinkaton as a really good utility Pokemon for group raids. Now we get into a healer that you're really going to want to pair with that Sword Dog. Also, maybe Lapras. Lapras was the first Pokemon cut from this list, but maybe I'll feature it in a future video. Pre-Marina is primed for a good showing here. Water and Fairy typing, same as Azumarill. I love it. We have the metronome because that way we can get our HP back with draining kiss, do some damage. You could go offensive minor pre-marina with calm minds. Right now I have a more utility focused moveset. Well, with chilling water to lower Rayquaza's attack. We have reflect to buff up our allies and then life do. Life do is going to be very important for those group raids. We want to keep our allies alive. On this list alone, we want to keep Azumarill alive after it belly drums. We want to keep Sword Dog alive because Sword Dog, if it has the sword, it can't heal itself. Depending on the moveset, Pre Marina could be a very good candidate to solo Rayquaza. I see the defense is a bit lower, so we're gonna have to rely on the Chilling Waters and some AI Intimidate allies if Rayquaza is only physical attacking. It's more naturally specially bulky, but I have my eye on Pre-Marine as well. I just think it's gonna be an elite group rating, and I think it's gonna make your team win more because that healing to cover up the mistakes of some of your teammates. I really love the idea of three sword dogs and a healer like Pre Marina. Pre Marina soften it up, keeping the dogs alive. Dogs howl up and hit for big boy damage. But let me know in the comments what you are cooking up for the five star Rayquaza raid. I bet I called it seven star Rayquaza a couple of times in this video. It's five star. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider dropping a like, leaving a comment, or using big chilling water on that subscribe button for more Dan Squared. Thanks for watching and happy Rayquaza season.